Hello guys and gals, welcome back. This will be part two of the Alex Rome response video. We did sound design in part one, how to get this sound, and now I'll be going through the music theory side of this chord progression here. Now, if you've been following uh, my channel at all, you'll notice I've been doing a series on EDM music theory where I focus only on the relevant aspects of music theory for EDM and electronic music, but we haven't quite arrived at chords just yet. So this video should act as an introduction to a few of the main concepts because this chord progression covers quite a lot. So let's get stuck in. The first thing we should talk about is key. This progression is in C sharp and the scale is minor. Now, if you don't know the C sharp minor scale, not a problem, because if you are not trying to learn an instrument to play live, I recommend you don't get bogged down with scales too soon, because playing an instrument and writing music are actually two different things. Yes, one does help the other, but we can speed up and streamline our learning process by using technology to help us focus on one thing at a time. The way we do this is I'm going to teach you this progression in A minor, not C sharp. And we do that because instead of having to memorize the specific notes of C sharp minor scale, all we have to do now is know that all the white notes are in fact the minor scale. And if we don't want to be in the key of A, for whatever reason, we simply pitch shift to the key we want to be in. In our case, to get back to C sharp, we just simply pitch up by four. A to C sharp is up four. And now, congratulations, you are playing the C sharp minor scale without having to memorize it. So now we have our key and our scale. And if you've watched my EDM music theory series, you know, the scale sets the rules and sets the mood. So how do we make a chord? A chord just means multiple pitches played together. And the most common of the chords is the triad, i.e. made of three notes. And it's simply within your scale, press one, miss one, press one, miss one, press one. So the first is the fundamental, note one of the scale, then you miss one. The second note of the chord is the third note of the scale, then miss one again. And lastly, the fifth note of the scale is our third note in the chord. So this is chord one because we're starting on note one. And there is a chord for every note in the scale. And typically you'll be working in scales that have seven notes. So we have seven possible chords to choose from. And from those, we can make our chord progression. A chord progression simply being when chords change over time. Now, if you've ever seen my comments below a music track on YouTube, I write them like this. You'll see the tempo, the key, the scale. In brackets is the mixed in key equivalent code for that scale. And then below, I write the progression. So this track from Alex's video, what progression is it? Well, he never actually plays the full loop. So I've taken some liberties kind of completing the progression as I thought it would probably go. And here we have a one, three, six, seven. So as you can imagine, to build those chords, we start with our note one. You press one, miss one, press one, miss one, press one. The next one is chord three of the scale. So we start on note three. Press one, miss one, press one, miss one, press one, and so on. Next is chord six, and then chord seven. So this is our progression. We just need to change the rhythm slightly. It's six beats for these two chords and two beats for these two chords. Now it sounds good but we still have some ways to go before it sounds like the production. So next, we need to talk about extensions. 
An extension just really means extending the chord beyond its bass triad form. So if we add one more note, keeping the same pattern of press one, miss one, press one, etc. This is called a seventh chord. Why is it called a seventh when we have four notes? It's because that note we've just added is seven notes up in the scale. So this standard triad here on note one would simply be called a minor chord. And by adding our first extension here, it becomes a minor seventh chord. And if I add one more, that's a minor ninth, and so on and so on. In this progression, we do have sevenths and ninths. The first chord is a seventh, and the third chord in the progression, chord six, is a ninth. And the reason you would use extensions is entirely down to the production. I can't really give you a rule of thumb there. Sometimes they help chill the chord out more, and sometimes it helps spice the chord up more. It's entirely dependent on the context. However, in this case, I think one reason they're used is a technique called common tones, or as I like to call them, droners. It's basically the concept of exploring the common notes between different chords, and chords with extensions have more notes, therefore you can find more common tones and hold that same note throughout the entire chord progression. You can see that here in the original chords, this note goes all the way through. And to explain how we get there, we need to go to our next two concepts, which are inversions and voicings. This is a, another fairly simple concept on paper. The inversion or voicing of a chord just simply means changing the structure of how it's built. They are all the same notes, just in a different order. For example, if we take our chord one here, this fundamental note doesn't have to be at the bottom. I can swap it to a higher octave and changing the lowest note like this is called an inversion. And the first time you do it is called the first inversion. So this is chord one, first inversion. Now if I take our next lowest note, note three, put that up the octave, we still have the same chord, but now this is the second inversion. Now changing a chord's voicing just simply means rearranging any of the other notes than the bottom note. So for example, if we don't like how these two notes are too close together, we can take this note seven and swap it to the note seven in the other octave. We still have chord one minus seven, but now it's been voiced differently. Much in the way, if there were four people using their voices to sing the four notes of this chord, you might have them change their range depending on where they can reach, thus revoicing. So now we should have an idea of chords, chord extensions, chord inversions and voicings, and making chord progressions with all those. So using those concepts, let me take you through how we arrive at that final piece that was in Alex's video. Okay, so firstly, what we do is swap the octave of these last two chords here, chord six, chord seven. Can you see how many common notes that's made between the chords? And now the chords aren't jumping around as much, which is much calmer sounding. The only problem is chord six is sounding a little muddy in this key. So we're going to revoice this chord by taking the second note away from the bass and moving it up. And I'm going to take the same idea and do that to the last chord also. That creates this nice melody on the top. Next, we're going to invert chord two, which makes the bass line a bit smoother too. Now, lastly, if you've ever heard me talk about implied harmony, you'll know not all chords need all notes. And we can clean this progression up 
by removing this one here. As you can hear, that's taking shape now. The last trick is to take our bass notes and have them be played by the bass part instead of this. You would call this arranging, because much like arranging for a band or an orchestra, you would usually have the bass part be played by the bass player. So not only do all chords not need all notes, but not all musical parts in your track need to cover the same things. If we add our ARP back in, there we have it. We got there. Now, I know that might be a lot if that was your first chord theory video, but it should at least help you be aware of the founding principles. What is a chord? What is a progression? What is an extension? What is an inversion? What is voicing? And a little bit on arrangement there at the end as well. I really hope that helped someone. And if you have any questions, please, please leave a comment below. Thanks again to Alex Rowe, not just for the music, for his contribution to this community. And a thank you and shout out to Mayon, who gave me a great excuse to make these videos in the first place. So thanks again, mate. And as always, if any of you liked it, hit the like button. If you loved it, hit the sub button. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.